Let's talk a, a bit about thread cutting on the lathe. I've been uh, thinking about doing a, a video or a series of videos on thread cutting for a while now. I was thinking about maybe doing one on a, a V-thread or maybe an Acme thread. Maybe even one on square threads or multi-start threads. Now I know there are a lot of thread cutting and machining videos already on YouTube. Seems everyone has their own idea of how to do these things. And while a few of them are based on actual experience, most of them sim simply regurgitate techniques learned on the internet or from textbooks or maybe from a high school shop class. And you end up seeing the same techniques over and over again. But uh, I also have an idea on how to do these things, but tend not to follow the crowd. I've been a research or a prototype machinist most of my life where I'm constantly using a wide variety of different machining processes. And over the years I've picked up a few techniques and shortcuts that you won't find in any book. As some of you may know from uh, my other videos, I tend to take a simple common sense approach to machining. Not always following traditional methods, and that includes thread cutting. Anyway, I understand that typical YouTube viewers have about a four minute attention span, and I've already burned about half of that, so we better get started. First thing we need to do before we uh, can cut a thread is to grind a tool. I went through my toolbox and gathered up a few examples of thread cutting tools I've made over the years. Let's see what we have here. This looks like a standard 60 degree V thread. Um, it's been relieved on the left side here probably to cut a thread up close to a shoulder. Let's see, here's, a, here's another one a little bit larger. Cut a, a coarser pitch thread. Also relieved on the left side just so you can get up close to a shoulder without hitting. Uh, this looks like this used to be a, an Acme thread. Okay, it looks like a 29 and a half degree included angle, but this one's been repurposed. See, it used to have a flat on it, but now that flat's been rounded off. I'm, I'm not sure what it was used for, but not for cutting an Acme thread, that's for sure. Here's a uh, just a standard high-speed steel tool bit that's been made into a, a boring bar for cutting an internal thread. See, it has a pretty fine 60 degree point, point on it. Here's one that's, uh, here's another boring type tool. This one's been relieved on the right side. I just used this recently to make a part that had a uh, protrusion in the bore. And I had to notch the tool to clear it. Here's my, my only carbide thread cutting tool. This is a carbide insert type. I bought this for a job I did made out of Invar. And carbide machines Invar are much better than high speed, so that's, that's why I went with it. <clears throat> but as you can see, with one exception, all the tools I pulled out of my box are high-speed steel. And there's a reason for that. For the type I work, the type of work I do, which is very similar to the type of work the typical machining hobbyist does, high-speed steel is the best choice. Why? Why is that? Well, first of all, high-speed steel is very economical. It's inexpensive to use. Um, you pay maybe 10 bucks for a, a 3 8 insert, or 3 8 high-speed steel blank and you can make that into a tool you can use resharpen it hundreds of times you can change it and make it into a different type of tool you'll get hundreds and hundreds of uses out of it for ten bucks carbide you'll pay eight to ten bucks for an insert like this you get three edges on it you bump it you push it a little too hard and it's gone there goes a third of your investment right there so High-speed steel is much more economical than, than carbide. High-speed steel is also more forgiving. Okay, it's more. It, your chances of breaking a high-speed steel tool bit are pretty slim. They're very easy to break carbide tool bits. Uh, carbide also requires something that most home hobbyists don't have. It requires a very rigid setup and very rigid machinery. Most people use lightweight machinery at home, and it's it's not intended for carbide. It's it's real hard on carbide. Carbide doesn't like to chatter, and it likes to be pushed in a certain way. It likes to have a high speed and a high feed rate, and you can't. You, a lot of home machines don't have the horsepower to do that. Uh, high speed steel also produces a much better surface finish. Carbide tooling is dull compared to high speed. There's no way you can't. You, there's no way you can get a a carbide tool as sharp as a high-speed tool. At least, at least we're talking carbide inserts. Braze tooling is a different story. You can you can hone the edge of a braze tool.
tool you know, for carbide, but uh, generally you'll get a better finish with high speed steel tools. High speed steel is also more versatile than carbide. This one tool bit I showed you with the notch out of the side, you know, it had to fit inside a board and clear an obstacle in there. That's, that's a pretty specialized shaped tool. You'll never find a carbide tool bit that'll do the same thing this does, unless you have it custom made or something like that. So, you know, carbide tool or high speed steel is a lot more versatile than, than carbide. And another plus for learning how to grind high speed steel tool bits is, is you'll you'll get your skills will improve in the, at the grinder and you'll be able to do you know apply it in other ways in the shop you'll be able to keep your drill bits nice and sharp so you don't have to go out and buy new drill bits every time they get dull in fact I have a video out on that shows you how to do that um, you can keep your screwdrivers in tip top shape you know nice hollow ground screwdrivers are, are a great thing to have you keep them all nice and sharp and you won't damage your screws um, you can also uh, keep the neighbor's lawnmower blades nice and sharp and, you know, stay popular with the neighbors. Before we can grind a threading tool, there are uh, a few angles and dimensions that we need to calculate. So let's discuss cutting tool, or in this case, threading tool, geometry. Here's a little bigger tool that we can, it's a little easier to see, so we can see the various angles and features. Uh, first of all, a, a threading tool is a form tool. In other words, when you cut a thread on the lathe, at least the way I do it, you're copying the shape of the cutting tool into the thread. In other words, you're, you're copying the exact shape of the tool that you ground into your thread form. Um, and in order to do this accurately, the top of the tool must be as close to horizontal as possible. Uh, this this is pretty easy for most of us because we a lot of us or most of us anyway have quick change uh, tool posts and those hold the tool bit horizontal already so we're we're halfway there uh, for those of you for those of you that use a, a lantern type or a rocker type tool post those tend to rock the tool bit back a little bit so if you have one of those first thing you do before you start grinding your tool is take a couple degrees off the top so when the tool bit's mounted in the lathe in your your tool post the top of the tool bit is horizontal. Let's talk about the parts of the tool here. First of all, we're going to be cutting a right hand external thread, so the tool is going to be feeding from right to left toward the headstock. And uh, that makes this the lead cutting edge angle right here. Okay, this angle does most of the work, it does most of the cutting. Um, it can be any angle relative to the tool. Some of those other ones I showed you, it was like this. Some of them were 90 degrees for like boring uh, an internal thread. Um, you can set this anything you want if you need to kick the kick the shank of the tool away from the work a little bit to clear a uh, clear feature. Um, just adjust you know adjust this angle and make it whatever you want. Uh, the other edge here, the other cutting edge, is the trailing cutting edge angle. Um, this one kind of follows along behind and doesn't doesn't do much work at least for the most most par, uh, most of the thread. Um, one thing it does need to be though, it, it does need to be at a 60 degree angle to the lead cutting edge angle. Um, we're cutting a V thread and it's a 60 degree V thread, so the, the more accurately we make this angle on our tool, the more accurate our thread is going to be. Um, clearance angles. Well, underneath the lead cutting edge angle, we have a clearance angle here. It's, it's generally 5 to 10 degrees, uh, less for steel, more for aluminum. Um, the trailing cutting edge angle, also 5 to 10 degrees, um, but we have to adjust this angle a little bit, these two clearance angles, according to the helix of the thread. If you look at the side of a thread, you, you know how the, the threads are, are a little bit angled? We have to match our tool bit into that, that angle. You can see it has, the, the point of the tool has a little bit of a, a slant to it. That's the helix angle of the thread. We'll discuss that in detail a little bit later here. Uh, the flat. You notice on the, the very point of the thread, this, this tool bit has a flat on it. There's several reasons that I like to use a flat. It's not a necessity for a V-thread, but it's recommended. I recommend it. Uh, first of all, it makes the tool smaller. When you put a flat on your, your tip of your tool, you're making the, the minor diameter of the thread a little bit larger, and that makes for a stronger thread. Uh, second, it, uh, it makes the tool stronger. Okay, if you, if you grind your tool to a sharp point, First thing's going to happen when you take a cut in a piece of steel, it's 
going to break that very sharp point off and then you're going to have a, a nice ragged edge on the end and it's going to make a crummy cut on your, your thread. So uh, put a little flat on it. Uh, a third reason is it makes a better looking thread. It, rather than thread that's cut down to a sharp V, if you leave a little thread on it or a little flat on it, it, it makes for a nicer looking thread. In part two of this series, we'll, we'll talk about how to calculate the width of the flat on a threading tool, as well as the helix angle of the thread. So uh, check out part two, and we'll, we'll see you there.